Hi there, I'm delighted to be talking to Bob, who is founder and director of Meducate Academy and an associate clinical educator ahead of the launch of the Practical Clinical and Consultation Forum in collaboration with Meducate Academy at the Pharmacy Show in 2023. Hi there, Bob. Hi there, Agnes. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you? Good. Yeah, great. Uh, looking forward to having a chat with you and telling you what we're going to be getting up to uh, at the Pharmacy Show, which is a, a first for us. It's great. No, excellent. We're really looking forward to it. So I guess just to start things off, if you could, um, for those of us who, or for those of the people watching haven't heard much about a bit about who you are and what you do. Yeah, so um, Medicaid Academy, um, I set up in 2018. So I've been going about six years now. Um, and I set Medicaid up um, as a training company because I noticed there was a, a, a lack of quality in medical education. Now, just a little bit of background, but I, I've uh, also been working for the University of Birmingham Medical School uh, for, for about 15 years as a medical role player and an associate clinical educator. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I thought, you know, this needs to be expanded rather than keeping it on campus at Birmingham. Surely there's an opportunity to expand further afield on various programs around the country. So I contacted some friends, some colleagues that I've met over the years, and they thought it was a great idea. I met up with Matt, my business partner, who's the brains behind it, the business brains behind it. And, and the company was set up, as I say, in 2018. And we're working at University of Chester, Wolverhampton, Newcastle University. Uh, we're going down Anglia Ruskin. So all over the place. And recently, about the past year, just started working with pharmacists because of the new, uh, the new uh, approaches to training for pharmacists on the undergrad and the postgrad courses. Mm. So... When we saw the pharmacy show, we thought, well, that sounds interesting. <laughs> uh, and now, as I say, we're working with pharmacists as well as other clinical uh, teams, such as medics, uh, such as GPs, uh, uh, undergraduate medical students, uh, physician associates, physiotherapists, pick a healthcare profession. <laughs> so we're, 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 we've expanded quite, quite quickly, quite quickly. Excellent. No, that, that's really interesting. And so I mentioned earlier that you are an associate clinical educator. Yeah. Um, and people may or may not have heard of that term and also the term medical role players. Mm. Could you well, clarify what the distinction is between these roles and what they do for, for people who might not be familiar with them? Absolutely. Uh, it's a fairly new term to a lot of people outside of the West Midlands, I think. The mm. University of Birmingham um, sort of under the auspices of Professor Jim Powell, created the Associate Clinical Educator role. It was Jim Jim Powell, Professor Powell's idea. Uh, and I was working with Jim Powell at the University of Birmingham uh, on this sort of project with a number of other people as well. Uh, so I started as a medical role player, giving feedback, you know, high fidelity feedback back to medical mm -hmm. students and PAs when they'd done a consultation, such as challenging behaviors, difficult patients, angry patients, scared patients, you know. Mm. Um, so I'd already been doing that for like 12 years, uh, you know, uh, creating a role, acting out the role, then giving feedback to the student and help them develop their skills as a communicator, building rapport and such like. Um, working with Jim Powell sort of opened my eyes to another aspect of clinical, of medical education. And that was the ability to give feedback on clinical skills. Mm. So whilst I'm not a medic, I have been trained in the body systems examination skills. So this is going to happen with pharmacy as well, where the yeah. pharmacists are expected now as part of their remit to do basic physical exams on patients. Obviously, mm. this is going to save the GP a lot of time, you know, um, and, and, and it helps the NHS with the problems they're having at the moment. So... Um, <laughs> I've been trained in body systems. So what are the body systems? Uh, respiratory, cardiovascular, gastrointestinal, cranial nerves, musculoskeletal problems. Mm. So things a pharmacist have to be able to do blood pressures now, for example, listen to the heart sounds, uh, listen to breathing sounds, mm. uh, find out where the pulses are in the body, just to make sure that the patient who's turning up at the, at the pharmacy uh, goes away with the right advice and is sent on the right pathway. So my job as an ACE uh, is, is pretty important in many ways because we're giving simple, straightforward, high quality information to the student as they examine us. So mm -hmm. for example, 
your stethoscope's in the wrong place. You need to move that to the correct position. You pressed on me too hard then and hurt me. That was uncomfortable. So it, it's those hands-on skills that yeah. we teach. It's quite an unusual role and we're known as associate clinical educators. So in a nutshell, we're lay educators who've been trained in body systems mm. fundamentally. I mean, on, on, at the show, we we'll want to obviously we're going to explain this in in some detail, but not go into it in too much detail because I think what we're going to be talking about at the show is more consultation skills, how to deal mm. with difficult communication situations. Of course, that's our expertise. So all of our aces at Medicaid, all of our aces, have been are highly trained uh, medical role players. So they're good educators, essentially. Okay, no, that's that's really interesting. Thank you. I think that's a, a good distinction. It helps people. It's quite to, it's uh, quite a broad well, field, but I've tried yeah. to try to put it together in a nutshell. No, that's helpful. Thank you. And um, so at the pharmacy show, um, what specific areas of of clinical education are the workshops going to be focusing on? Okay, as I said previously, we will probably talk a little bit about our clinical skill aspect because I think people are interested in that, and it's mm. often a topic for conversation afterwards. But the primary focus of the event at the pharmacy show is to, to it's a workshop. So mm -hmm. I want people to go away with an idea that, hey, I'll be able to use this the next time I in, I'm in communication with a patient, for example. So we're going to talk about the, the basic background to effective communication, how to mm -hmm. have difficult conversations, how to deal with difficult patients, how to deal with patients who have fixed beliefs, for example, say with vaccines, injections, um, you know, the COVID virus was a perfect example of that. People were yeah. reticent, you know, they were believing what they saw on the internet and mm. refusing to get their kids immunized and things like that. Um, so it's to, to handle situations that are, are sometimes out of the norm and mm. to talk generally about what makes an effective communicator, you know, simple things from body language all the way through to quite, quite important strategies that maybe some of the pharmacists have not heard. Uh, and and as always, whenever we're running workshops like this, we involve people if they want mm. to be involved. Um, we do, we're going to do demonstrations of how not to do a consultation and then how to do it correctly with the feedback from from the students mm. in the room, from the delegates, you know. Um, and hopefully people will go, yeah, people will go away with a couple of little strategies, you know. And there's going to be a handout as well for people to take away that might jog the memory and help them with some ideas about how they can improve their comm skills. And of course, we always learn something from, from the pharmacists because some highly experienced people out there mm. and we like their mm. feedback as well. We love to get their input. And they're usually the ones that are the most vocal and actually mm. challenge us, which is great. Excellent. Um, and I guess finally, we you touched on this a little bit earlier about mm. why um you decided to move into the area of, of, of pharmacy um and as you say we've got we'll have some very experienced sort of pharmacists and pharmacy professionals in the room yeah. why do you think it's particularly important for this area of clinical education um why is it important to community pharmacy okay um a pharmacy department at wolverhampton university approached us to work on their independent prescribing course mm -hmm. yeah which pharmacists know all about i don't need to explain that um, and with, as I said, the new policy now to train undergrads so that when they qualify at the end of their pharmacy degree, they're already prescribers. Um, and what the Hampton approached us, first of all, it was to help with their OSCEs, their exams for the IPC course. Then I think they realized what we what else we had to offer and, and started to talk to us about, you know, with community pharmacies changing. And we weren't aware of that, how big the changes were. Mm. Uh, so I thought this is a great opportunity for us to put our skill set and our people out there to help and work with pharmacists who, you know, particularly at undergrad level, would be struggling with these techniques. And at a community mm. level, uh, would help them with things like difficult conversations. Uh, I think um, from the pharmacists I've spoke to, I, I recently gave a talk on comm skills to um, a pharmacy team meeting at Dudley. There's about mm. 60, 60 highly experienced pharmacists there. And they, I was surprised at how concerned they were about upskilling in terms of their comm skills. Mm -hmm. So this is why we sort of, it, this is what inspired me to say, yeah. you know, we had a great day there, absolutely brilliant couple of hours. 
and the feedback was tremendous and there was obviously a need for it yeah um so i thought let's get this thing rolling and then of course we saw the pharmacy show we thought wow this is all <laughs> synchronicity you know uh and and, and set up set up a training program called pharma pathways which is now obviously featured on the website and we've had a lot mm -hmm. of interest so um we're hoping to help upskill community pharmacists to become better and more effective communicators and i think you know yourself as a communicator yourself agnes we can all learn about communication it's a really important <laughs> skill being able to develop rapport with people absolutely know. and it's an ongoing thing isn't it it's so an ongoing you can never thing fully learn. Yeah, it's a journey I've been on a long time, you know, and, and I'm constantly amazed at how much stuff I learned from other people. Mm, absolutely. It's a win-win. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Um, well, brilliant. Thank you so much, Bob. It's been really great to talk to you today, and we're really looking forward to seeing you in October in Birmingham at the NEC. And I can't wait. And finally meet you in person, Agnes. Absolutely. Look forward to it. Okay, thanks so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.